Good afternoon everybody and a warm welcome to Barringer and today I have a new addition to show you and I also have um, a fiddle yard progress report to give to you also. So in, in case the um, screenshot or caption hasn't given it away for you, um, this is my new arrival um, and it's kind of unexpected actually because um, I gathered the date had been put back and then it, as it so happens it turned up and I asked about it and it turned up at my local model shop today and it, in front of you is the Dowpole 00 gauge class 73 electric locomotive and I have to say it is my very first Dapol um, loco to the Behringer fleet. Um, most of them are Backmans or Hornbys with a few Vi trains thrown in. And um, so this is my and a couple of Helgens as well. So this is my very first Dapol um, 73. Now I've been waiting for it for ages and ages, and I did have one in a Lima model. And I'm about to show you what the Dapol version looks like. So the 73 that I've, that I've decided to go with was 73124 in the BR blue livery. Um, this class 73 comes in a huge number of liveries. Um, and they are so popular. In fact, I was told that um, my local model shop said that they basically sold out um, a lot of their, their 73s already. I mean, this particular 73, 124, was the last, in fact, the last three in this display cabinet. Um, all his stock had gone, except for the last three that were in his cabinet, and now he's only got two, I think. So they've, they've gone really, really quickly, and they've been proved to be very, very popular indeed. So let me just show you what it looks like in the flesh. So this is class 73, 124, in the BR blue livery. And it's absolutely stunning, to be honest. Um, I've been after this one for such a long time. I mean, I was so excited when Dapol said they were going to release it because um, the Lima versions were a bit too long in the tooth. The, the Hornby versions were okay, but were basically a, a slightly updated version of the Lima ones. But the tooling was, wasn't that great. Um, but this particular one it's just absolutely, it's my, like I said, it's my first depot um, locomotive and um, she's absolutely stunning if I just go and show you the front, I'll quickly pan round, well slightly pan round I should say so you can have a good look at the, the, the detailing on it she's so beautiful um, it has, let me just go through some of the details of it. I'll just put it there. Um, she has front lighting in the direction of travel. So she doesn't have, uh, so, so it doesn't have the rear lights as in, as in the red. It only has the direction of travel, which is the white one, which is displayed on the destination, um, on the destination indicator on whichever side it is travelling on. Um, a footnote to this is um, if you are contemplating buying one of these there is a known fault with it. Um, Dapol are aware of it and I'm just going to make you all aware of it because it's actually a DCC related um, fault with it. Um, it runs perfectly fine on analogue which is what mine is. Um, it also has cab lights I should say as well as the directional travel um, lighting but that is literally it um, but as far as the DCC side of it there was some sort of wiring glitch or something with the 73 and what that meant was that if you do run DCC on this 73 or any other double 73 um, basically the direct the lights will go on the direction of travel facing one way whilst the loco is travelling in the other direction and it is a known fault um, and Dapol are aware of it um, 
apparently they've put something up on on their website so if you are considering getting one of these and you do have a DCC layout um, it is worth checking out the DAPO website first to see exactly what the issue is I mean it doesn't really affect me because I like I said I run analog on Behringer so it doesn't really bother me um, however um, I believe it's just a relatively simple issue uh, to fix I, I believe it's something to do with um, going into your CV settings and readjusting them to make it work it's not really they've they've corrected one fault but not the other fault so please please if you are considering buying one of these and you do run DCC just go and check out the depot website first to make sure that you get the full information as to the fault with it and what you have to do so you're happy enough to sort of um, purchase it and knowing that there is this fault with it so you can correct it yourself sort of thing um, however like I said it doesn't affect me and it was actually run on the shop's test track and it ran perfectly well the one thing I would say that's a little bit of a disappointment with it is you don't um, there's no like you get with some of the back I think it's the Batmans you get some you get a switch well a number of locals you get a switch say on the bottom of it usually underneath the fuel tank or something and you can flick the, the the lights off like say if it had tail lights you could flick it off if it's say for example if it's pulling a load of wagons and on the DC version which is how I run it um, the cab lights stay on all the time so you get the you get the direction of travel lighting on the destination indicator but you also get the cab lights and you don't have a little switch as an option to switch the cab lights off now again I suspect with DCC you will you won't have that issue once you've corrected the C V values in order to get it to all all the line to work correctly as it should. So but on the DC version the, the cab lights will stay on all the time as well as the destination indicators. So that's the only thing I, I would kind of say against it. But it's a vast, vast superior model far superior model to what um Lima and Hornby have produced, but in all fairness to Lima, it, you know, it is an old, older model, and um, but it, it did stand up to the test of time pretty well. Now, before I finish with the Class 73, um, sort of, I guess it's, I suppose it is a review, really. Um, I just thought I'd show you uh, my iPad, and on my iPad, as you can see in front of you, has got numerous. Um, pictures or oh, this is off Olivia's Trains website and Olivia's Trains have got their own um, Olivia's exclusive um, editions that they that they do so if you go to your local model shop the ones that you can buy as a standard um, as a standard 73 is the class 73 in the um, executive livery they call it I think it is um, and then you've got the one on the right which is the BR large logo livery which is the class 73105 that's one's 102 as you can probably see and these two on the bottom which is the BR blue version which is the one I have um, bought and then you've got the one on the right which is the green version so these are the four one two three four that you can buy as standard um, from Depot um, or any local model shop and then all the rest of these ones are exclusive to um, Olivia's trains and I don't know how well you can see it but they've got um, um, an EWS one here um, a network corral one here um, they've also got the Gatwick Express um, which is also one I would have liked to um, interest, would have been interested in um, then you've got the GB rail freight which is the um, the newer version and then after you've got the GB rail freight in the older version um, which is, I think they call it like the Barbie um, the, the Barbie um, colour scheme for some reason I, th I think that's how it got nicknamed or something I could be wrong but, um, basically it's essentially the same colour scheme as I don't know if any of you follow Graham over at Lakeside he's just recently bought a Class 66 a very nice looking and sounding Class 66 at that and basically it is the same livery except applied to the 73 which is this one here 
So, if you want a full selection of, if you are interested in the 73s and you want to know what the full selection of the liveries are, um, then I suggest you go to Olivia's website and they will show you all the actual liveries that you can choose from. So, like I said, there is loads of them. I mean, like I said, it's 10 in total. And the one here in the corner is um, is the Depol, Freg, uh, I think it's Fregsnet livery, um, class 73. So, that's the last one. Um, and they're all very nice. Um, personally, I chose the class 73 in the BR Blue because that's the one that sort of suits my layout better. I could have gone for the large logo or even, like I said, the exec or the Gatwick Express. But in fairness, um, in truth, personally, out of the two blue ones, I think that the BR Blue suits Class 73 better than the large logo um, livery. I thought that the plain blue looks actually looks better on the 73, but that's my own personal opinion between the two. So welcome to part two of this um, update, or this video I should say, and just to sort of um, show you where we're at, if we're at the town scene and the tunnel mouth leading towards the scenic break and the fiddle yard, which is here. And I'll keep it short and sweet because there isn't really much to show you or much to say. Uh, well, there is a fair bit to say, but I just don't want to bore you with, with too much detail. Um, basically, when I did the testing video the other day, it ran along this section of track up until here. Because um, I just ran out of track, basically, and um, so I couldn't really extend it anymore. Um, but basically, the idea was is was to test this little gradient here that I have here, which inadvertently turned up um, when building this unit. Um, so I needed to check to see whether or not this gradient was going to cause a problem. And also because I hadn't really ran um, a full six coaches through Barringer Underground Station and I wanted to test to see whether or not it was there was any derailing issues or any track issues down that point. And again whether or not it would negotiate this part well enough. And in truth it hasn't. So that's good news. Um, the next bit I'm going to be doing is dividing the fiddle yard into three sections. Um, the front, the back, sorry I should say the front, the back and the upper which is going to be this bit here which I'm sort of toying with. I haven't actually tested it so that's something I need to do. Now the point of doing this is um, this is a DC layout, as, as I keep saying, and I'm sure all of you are sick to death of hearing, to hear me saying it. But um, to avoid any sort of um, return loop issues, where obviously if you say that goes all the way around the flat or around, and then it will rejoin here, and rather than having um, these issues of uh, polarity and all the rest of it, what I've decided to do is to keep it as simple as possible here. Um, and basically um, have two separate sections and no points along this bit here. And that will mean that um, I'll, I'll, I'll basically get rid of all those polarity issues. I won't have to worry about any of that. So that's kind of, that's why I've decided to break it up into the Morwood, the Barringer and the Upper. And they will be color coded into three colors and that's also for me to look at a glance to see what's on the Barringer side or on the Morwood side. Also, um, when it comes to all the switches and everything like that, that will go along. Um, if anybody decides that they're going to come and help me or would like to come over and help me or whatever, they know that all those switches there are for that particular colour coded area. So, if I ask them to change a point, let's say, say for example, on the Morwood side, and if the colour code is green for example then the switch is going to be somewhere on the green panel rather than sort of going all the way through every single switch you know that whatever that switch is it's going to be on the green panel as opposed to the red panel because the red panel is say for example the Barringer side so it's that kind of thing the upper side is basically um, it looks like I'm going to get nine tracks from left to uh, left to right or right to left whichever way you want to look at it and the sort of idea is to divide four 
Barringer, four from Allward, and the one at the back will go towards the upper level. And it, basically, it's for two car units. I'd say so. Those two coaches there in the corner, um, say for example, for argument's sake, are um, is a two car DMU. And the point of that is, I'm hoping it will just sort of go up to an upper level because there's space up here to do so. And basically, from that one track, let it sort of fan out and lead into another, say, four, five, six tracks, or however many it can it can do to take two car units and maybe stable some locomotives in the process um, to make the most of the room available. Um, a bit like what I did to Morwood Station and um, when it wasn't Morwood Station and I had the Philly Yard there. Those of you who've been following this channel way back will, will know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, so that's about it for it. So as progress um, comes along I will keep you informed. Um, so I hope you like what you've seen. Um, any comments please feel free to comment and subscribe. And um, I hope you like my 73 too. So, um, bye for now.